Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, it's been a, about a week or so since me and Alex got on the got on the horn here, because you know Alex is out there being bougie, uh, going on vacation and stuff. Uh, so first, Alex, I'm gonna ask you. First, I'm gonna say welcome back, and then the second thing I'm gonna say is, uh, so how about just the trip? Just was it good, bad, and different? I mean, for the people that don't know, you can. You know, share what you, what you did or what was the purpose of the cruise or your trip or whatever. Yeah, the trip was good. And um, I'll be posting a few videos probably before this one actually posts um, that people will see of the trip. But yeah, it was overall, it was a good trip for sure. OK, so now the question that I have and uh, even though people won't ask, but I know they're thinking in the back of the head is how is somebody that's. 25 to 25 right i want to make yeah. sure I'm, yeah i got 25. that right okay yeah and so he 25 you know he he a quarter of a century years old how can somebody that's 25 years old in this economy where we got record market i mean record interest rates we got all-time low as far as home buying uh inflation is at a 40-year high how can you afford to still go on vacation and survive? So I think there's, I think there's several factors into it, but it all stems from my wife and I working together since the beginning of our marital relationship in combining our finances. And when we started this early, we were able to, let's say, get into the housing market early and early in Florida terms and that big expense that everyone has of their housing was able to be, you know, we were able to get into that housing expense at a lower cost than what people are paying in this economy today in Florida. I think that's a big factor. Maybe you have something to say. Well, so just to give people context, when you say lower and some people going People, because of course everybody's looking at us from different locations around the U.S. and the world. Is so. What is your monthly expense, just as far as just mortgage, interest, taxes, just to be able to obtain the property that you live in? What is the monthly expense for that? For the house, just for the house, just for the house, under seventeen hundred a month, and it's a okay, seventeen hundred a month. So seventeen hundred a month, and then again, so I'll go back to. Being 25 years old and $1,700 a month in most parts of the United States. So especially in the Southern Belt, especially in the, you know, the Arkansas, the Georgias, south of Atlanta, not in Atlanta, uh, and some of the rural areas. And hell, I mean, you take out, you know, California, you take out New York, New Jersey, and, you know, Rhode Island stuff in the Northeast, $1,700 a month is a lot of money per month for housing. So when you say that y'all work as a tandem, the, the more the more or less thing people are asking, and I'm asking also is, what do you mean work as a tandem? Is it just, hey, we both get jobs and we both, you know, we both can save our money to go on vacation, you know, People want to know what steps did y'all take? Like, is it a singular income? Is it a combined household? Everybody make decisions together or is everybody separate? Is it separate bank accounts and things of that nature? So how would you able that again, I'll ask your question. How would you able at 25 years old with, you know, we got 40 year highs in interest rate market. You know, we got credit card debt at all time high. We got student loan debt at all time high. We got inflation at breakneck paces, uh, cost of groceries and things like that. How was you able to do it when the common person at 25 years old can barely afford to go to McDonald's once a week and you're going on seven and eight day vacations? Yeah, so the housing was just one of the factors. There's other factors. I mean, the biggest one is working together in the sense of combining our income where, you know, we've been at the same company, let's say, uh, just speaking on W-2 income, we've been at the same job for five to seven years, you know, each of us. And um, 
when we started we were making roughly 75,000 and that's pretty much when we got our house and then we didn't have any car payments and we basically just since that day have been investing 60 to 70 percent of our income since that day and that day was over four years ago so 60 to 70 percent of our income you know for the past four years and that's just continued to accumulate and that money that we've invested has provided us extra incomes in two different avenues stocks real estate um my wife has also gotten into uh health insurance she's a licensed agent in health insurance so that is another income so it was finding ways to keep our expenses low um i think housing being the biggest personal finance expense people would have and then finding other ways to increase our income as well because our income does not solely depend on our jobs okay now i gotta backtrack a little bit because you said something that that most people can't fathom can't understand um you know everybody you know when you start talking about financial gurus or people that's on the social media space they want to say uh you need to save and invest at least the employee match on the 401k you need to at least max out your Roth IRA you know maybe you need to you know save and invest 15 percent of your income you know for the Dave Ramsey uh followers out there you're saying something that's not that's not understood I understand it but just to convey to the other people again, say again, how much percentage do you and your wife save per paycheck? About 60 to 70 percent. That's 6070 percent. So for all the people that's watching out there and they thinking that, oh, life is life is sweet if you want to retire early. And things like that, that you can do it on 10%. No, you can, at 10, 15%, you'll be able to retire when you're about 65, 70. If you're really serious about getting out of this game of being in the rat race, of just paying bill to bill, paycheck to paycheck, and can't afford anything, you got to do something extreme. And I always say, if you want an extreme change from the life that you know or the legacy of the life that you live, you got to do something extreme to do it. And investing more saving more is a key component of it so alex i'm gonna speak for you so uh people understand you know you hear about the people that say oh you can't go out there and buy lattes every day alex is one of the biggest coffee fiends i know in the history of mankind he's only 25. he act like he was born in the great depression or something <laughs> but he figured out a way to not spend that money on the five dollar lattes because he didn't want to be too lazy to go do it himself so he made a a minor big purchase let's say 100 200 dollars for espresso machine and he created itself so that 100 dollars, 200 dollars investment for the espresso machine and he probably spent less than that knowing him <laughs> that would that would be able to give him those coffees because he drank like four or five how many you drink a day yes like yeah, I've been trying to cut back, you know, maybe about three a day. <laughs> well, yeah, so he he four or five a day. So, <laughs> but the thing is, is people people today they think that if it ain't espresso, or if it ain't a frappuccino, if it ain't a uh, a cappuccino or a mocha or any of this other stuff that's out there, these fancy names, if it don't come from Starbucks or Dutch Bros or one of these uh, pop up shops that's out there, then it's not the real thing. So when, when, you know, everybody get frustrated when they say, oh, if you stop doing the cappuccinos or you stop doing the lunch per day, those were things that he actually cut out. Those are sacrifices he made now so he can be able to, at 25, go take a five day vacation in just the middle of no time. It's not like the summer or any crazy stuff like that. He just went and just took it just on a whim. Hell, anybody that's been following this channel for more than three days, this... This dude going Colombia, Venezuela. He just he's just a local, he's just a world traveler. Now, when I met him, he probably left the city, the state of Florida once, but now he's a world traveler. But why? 
How was he able to obtain to be a world traveler at such a young age? He used the money that he worked for to invest in things to pay for the life he wanted to live. He didn't work the 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Him and his wife didn't work those hours to go pay for a vacation. They took that money, saved and invested it to buy assets that paid for the life they want to live. And I say this all the time is only thing you got to do that is pay for that asset once. And then, like I said, let's say for vacations, let's say he spent, let's say eighty, a hundred thousand dollars on an asset, that just keep paying him monthly. That would allow him to go on a vacation three to four times a year. He only had to do that once, and it will allow him to keep going on vacation three to four times a year for the rest of his life. But if you pay for those vacation and things with your W two income, then you're going to have to keep working to pay for those vacations three or four times a year. He only had to do it once. Everybody want to do it multiple times over again. So that's the secret sauce there. But Alex, I'll let you close it out. But I just wanted to make sure people understood that nuance of it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's what allowed us to be able to do things like this was just investing heavily. Um, I mean, there was a time where for like the first, I want to say three years, we didn't really go anywhere. Um and we were just trying to really my mindset was just trying to accumulate as much as I could. So that's why, you know, when you say most people think that the company match is the maximum. But in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, but to think that that's the maximum shows that you're not really looking hard enough because I wanted to know how much I could actually put into a 401k. I wanted to know how much I could contribute to my investments. And 60, 70 percent was like the maximum that we could do it wasn't like oh let's just like break off and have a little bit of spending money kirby knows we barely spent anything and you know 60 70 that was like the max that was as much as we could do uh per month and um you know eventually it just piled up and um we were able to get you know rental properties stock investments and stuff and uh her building her insurance and the great thing with some of those career opportunities, like being your own independent agent in whatever field, is some of those offer a drip kind of income, a residual income where you do the work up front and then those clients just pay you on a monthly basis. So um, that we also look at as a passive income. Um, but doing things like that is what um, allows us to do things that we want to do, you know, thinking differently, going for income sources that require just you know putting as much effort as possible up front but understanding that we don't want to be a slave to a, a company right and and that's the key there because you know most people they get paid on thursday and friday and then they broke by monday this guy getting paid on thursday friday and then he's broke by thursday or friday Meaning broke as in he allocated his money to saving and investing instead of going to the club, going to the bars, going to the restaurant. He did that in his early 20s to set himself up because everybody wanted to say, oh, when I retire, I just want to travel. He sacrificed 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Let's give him five years to be able to, without any effort really on his part, to travel the rest of his life. The earlier the sacrifice, the better the reward. The thing that Alex is doing, people don't realize today in their 50s and 60s, and then they too old, decrepit, and don't want to do nothing else to change jobs, get better educated to move up in the company. That's all he did. And that's all that you as a viewer need to do is sacrifice a couple years to have forever abundance. I mean, of course, I know Alex is going to, go into the mode of sacrificing again to save more, save more, to get more assets, to get more assets. Eventually, that the assets will end up paying for his living expenses, pay for all his day-to-day -day life activities. So now he don't have to worry about any of those expenses. But that's all it took. A couple years of sacrifice give multiple years of reward. I'm going to say that again. A couple years of sacrifice, multiple years and lifetime years of reward and that's how it works in the money plan that's how money works 
if you're not giving your money to everybody, then you have more money and you have that money make more money, that money will finance your life. And then other people will pay for your lifestyle. And then it's easy peasy. Alex is not sitting there making, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year from a W2 job. He just have an average everyday job that he decided to, hey, I'm going to take this money that I work for to make more money. And then the money's making more money for him to live his life. So Alex living the life of a 65 year old that's retired when he's 25. And he still got 50, 60, 70, 80 more years to doing this. All of the small investments that he, the small sacrifices, excuse me, that he made at an early age. So hopefully people take note of that and start changing their mindset and dynamic of how things go. And maybe things will turn out a little bit better for you. Well, that means said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, uh, leave us a comment down below, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.